fine and intricate sculptures and it is made in such a way there is a gap in between you can actually insert your finger While India is still in the phase of Unlock 6, using public transport such as railways and airlines remain a challenge for many of us. In such trying times, a road trip is perhaps the best way to explore new places. Travelling to safe zones within the country gave us some respite, but at the same time, travel precautions are a must. In this travel vlog, we are heading towards Ramappa Lake in Palampade village located in Warangal district of Telangana. Ramappa Lake is around 211 km from Hyderabad. On my left is an isolated monolithic rock and atop the rock is the remnants of a fort known as Bhongir Fort. This fort was constructed around the 10th century by the western Chalukyan king Tribhuvan Malla Vikramaditya VI. Hence this fort was named after him as Tribhuvan Giri Fort which gradually became Bhuvan Giri and then Bhongir. We continued our journey along the National Highway 163 for some more time until Google directed us to take a left turn which would take us to our destination at Palampit village. In 600 meters, turn left. left then turn right turn right right Sometimes Google map can act weird. So instead of taking us to our resort, it took us through an extremely narrow road and then directed us to take a U-turn which would have eventually landed us into the waters of the lake. We then verified from the locals and realized that the resort is on the opposite end of the same road. We finally reached our resort. Harita Lake View Resort at Ramappa has AC as well as non-AC cottages and is located right in front of the Ramappa Lake. The resort is spread over a large area. We booked the AC Deluxe Cottage which was spacious with an arranged seating area and two spacious rooms. <laughs> Our bedroom was right in front of the Ramappa lake. We had a little visitor inside our cottage and we decided not to disturb it. After a quick rest in the afternoon, we went to visit the Ramappa temple, an architectural marvel from the Kakatiya era and located within close proximity to our resort.
Lord Shiva is worshipped in this temple as Rama Lingeshwara. Ramappa temple is one of the most beautiful temple constructed during the Kakatiya period. This temple was built in 1213 AD during the time of the Kakatiya king Ganapati Deva. The uniqueness of the temple lies in the fact that it was named after the name of its main architect Ramappa and is probably the only temple to be named so. The Ramappa temple is built on a 6 feet high star shaped raised platform. The main structure of the temple is made out of red sandstone while the columns on the outer side are of black basalt rich in iron and magnesium. We reach the temple a little before sunset. This temple has an intricately designed tall tower. It is said that the main part of the temple, especially the tower, is made up of floating bricks. Floating bricks weigh one-third or one-fourth of the weight of regular bricks. These types of bricks were specially made during ancient times using a special combination of sawdust along with clay and other ingredients. Samples of bricks were actually collected from here and tested in the laboratory to confirm and it was found that these bricks actually can float on water unlike the regular ones. Sandbox technology was used here for laying the foundation where a pit was dug and filled with sand which was later mixed with granite chips, jaggery and a kind of tropical almond extract. On this foundation they built structures which were earthquake resistant to a great extent. While gazing at the temple, I could not locate a single part where there were no designs or carvings and each part and each layer is different and unique. There is a Nandi shrine located opposite to the main temple. In all Kakatiya style architecture, Nandi always has its head slightly tilted in one direction. The columns around the temple have beautiful carvings of female dancers and musicians. Perini Shiva Tandavam dance was revived by the notable dance guru Nataraja Ramakrishna after seeing the dance sculptures of this temple. We entered the main temple where the sanctum is located. After stepping inside the temple, I could see that the floor of the temple was not plain. Numerous beams could be seen projecting from beneath everywhere, making the temple floor extremely uneven. There is a reason for this. This region was struck by a powerful earthquake in the 17th century. Everything in this area was flattened except this temple where there occurred only some minor damages. While proceeding towards the sanctum, I just couldn't take off my eyes from the delicately carved figures on each and every single pillar inside the hall of the temple. There were carvings depicting figures playing different musical instruments. Because playing different 
intricate sculptures and it is made in such a way that you can insert your finger, you can insert something, it's not fixed with the base. The ceilings of the temple have floral motifs carved to perfection. Each and every inch of the temple reflects the brilliant craftsmanship during the Kakatiya era. Marco Polo, the famous explorer and merchant who had travelled throughout Asia during his visit to this temple, described it as the brightest star in the galaxy of temples. The outer walls of the temple are lined with numerous stretches of carvings. Here we can see one band of elephants going in one particular direction. There are so many elephants going in uh, one particular direction. Mm. It is said that you have to follow the direction of these elephants to make a complete round of the temple. Mm. A variety of carvings, each different from the other. There are carvings depicting human figures in various activities. There are figures of mythical characters. Another band on top of it has carved floral motifs. This region suffered massive destruction due to a devastating earthquake in the 17th century. Except for the main temple and the Nandi Mandap opposite to it, everything else was destroyed. There are some carvings on the outer wall showing long pointed structures, looks like some kind of drilling machine with spikes at regular intervals. I wonder how they placed one rock over another in a tight grip without the use of cement. They must have used a high level technology where rocks were fitted in perfect measurements which even the earthquake could not alter. The roof of the temple has finely carved semicircular protrusions all over. I wonder what these meant. One can find some gaps in between these slabs. It was probably due to the earthquake. It clearly shows that Kakatiyas knew the technology to build earthquake resistant structures. When the entire area was flattened due to the earthquake, this temple stood erect. The sun was about to set while we started back for our resort. I kept thinking about the extraordinary Ramappa temple which we had just visited, of this region which was long past its days of glory. The Ramappa lake in front reflected the reddish hue of the setting sun. This artificial lake was also built by the Kakatiyas long back as a water reservoir. We came back to our cottage but didn't feel like going inside. I felt as if the setting sun was trying to convey something about the glory of the bygone era of which the sun is the only witness. <laughs>